2-4, more about linear equations. So in this section, we're going to continue what we talked about linear equations um, in the last section. Uh, we're going to continue by introducing a couple new forms of linear equations, specifically point slope form and standard form of linear equation. So our objective is to write an equation of a line given a slope and a point on that line, right? Point slope. So we're going to graph it with just the point and just the slope. And what you should know by the end is that slopes of two lines in the same plane indicate how the lines are related. And we'll get to this uh, near the end. All right, so the first thing we need to know is that given a slope and a y-intercept, we can write the equation of a line in slope-intercept form, which was y is equal to mx plus b. All right, that's what we did last time. Uh, we can also write, a line of an, or write the equation of a line in something called point-slope form. Okay? So in order to write an equation of a line in point slope form through this point, x1, y1, with a slope of m, we're going to use this equation right here. y minus y1 is equal to m, m times x minus x1. The important thing to notice is that this equation has negative signs in it. And we'll get to why that is important uh, when we start looking at the problems. But you got to realize that because the equation has a negative sign in it, the signs of the points might change. Okay? So where does this function come from? Where does it, it doesn't just appear by magic, not just because I said so. Okay? We can see why it works. Okay? By substituting a general point, x comma y, for x2, y2 in the slope formula that we've used before. Right? We can rewrite the slope formula into a point, into our point slope form. So let's do the first step. Let's replace these two with just a general y, y1, and a general x. Okay. Now, if I want to move some stuff around and I want to get y and y1 by itself, the first thing I would do would be to multiply each side of this equation by x minus x1. Okay. When I did that, the denominator would cancel, and I would be left with x minus x1 times m is equal to y minus y1. Okay. Now I can use the commutative property, right? The commutative property says that I can rewrite this equation by bringing the m over to this side. And then I can use the reflexive property, which can reverse this whole equation. So I'm going to take this and put it to this side and this to put it to this side. Okay, so my answer would now look like y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1, which is exactly our point slope formula right there. Okay, so this formula doesn't just appear out of nowhere. It is a, a way to change the slope formula into a form that we can use to write an equation. Okay. So when is this equation useful? Okay. We can mostly use this equation when we're trying to find uh, an equation of a line if we're given a point and we're given the slope. So what is the equation of this line? Well, let's use our formula. y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. Okay. Let's plug in the information that we know. y minus y1 is equal to the slope times x. Now here's where we get a little tricky. x1 is a negative. The formula includes a negative sign. So we are going to have to, we're going to plug in negative 5. So it's going to be x minus negative 5 and a minus a minus would turn into a plus. So this is what I said when I mentioned that your signs are going to change when you plug in a point. Okay. And then if I were looking at a point slope equation, I should realize that this represents a positive 2 as a point, and this represents a negative 5 as a point. Okay. Let's look at a quick problem. Okay. So if I have a point and I have a slope, I can set up my equation y minus y1 is equal to negative 3 times x plus 1, x minus x1. And looking at my answer choices, I can see my answer is B. Okay. For this problem that got a lot of you during class, looking at here, if my slope is undefined, that means that I am going to have a vertical line. 
Okay? So I'm going to have a line that looks like that, which means that I do not have a y. Okay? So that means x never changes. And in this equation, x is going to be equal to negative 3. So the only one that says x is going to be equal, or sorry, x is equal to positive 3. The only one that says that x is equal to positive 3 is that one, which, of course, it does because we can add 3 right to both sides to give me x is equal to 3. If there was no if there was no x like this equation, that would mean that the slope is zero, not undefined. Undefined slopes happen when uh, in an equation where there is no y. So this problem gives us two points, and we want to write an equation with two points. We did this previously by putting it into slope-intercept form. Uh, we can do it with point-slope form a little easier. The first thing we need is the slope. So to find the slope, we're going to do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which is going to be 8 minus 2 over 5 minus 3, which is going to be 6 over 2, which is 3. Now that I have the slope, I can write an equation in point-slope form. Now, it does not matter which point I choose to use. Either one of them is going to give me the same equation. So let's use 3, 2 first. So that would be y minus 2 is equal to m times x minus 3. There's my equation in point-slope form. If we did the other point, it would be y minus 8 is equal to 3 times x minus 5. Those two equations may not look exactly the same, but they are. If we wanted to be sure that they are, we could put them into slope-intercept form. Oh, whoops. That should be a 3, right? That's the slope. Okay. So if we, we could put them into slope-intercept form. I would do that. I would distribute the 3. Okay, so I would have y minus 2 is equal to 3x minus 9. Add 2 to both sides to get the y by itself. We'd have y is equal to 3x minus 7. Over here, we could do the same thing. Distribute the 3 and add 8 to both sides. And we would have y is equal to 3x minus 7. And we see that these two are the same. So while these two equations in point-slope form might not look exactly the same when we start, they are the same as we plug in the different points. Okay. Uh, a quick problem to do right here, right? We would first find the slope. And so we would do 2 minus negative 5, which would be plus 5, over... 0 minus 5, so that would be 7 over negative 5. And now that we know the slope, just quickly looking at these answers right here, this is the only one with the slope of negative 7 over 5. So that's going to be my answer. And we can plug the point in two to get, to get my, my full equation. Okay. The other type of equation that we're going to use when we're talking about uh, a line is something called standard form. So in standard form, that's when the sum of x and y are terms set equal to a constant. So we're going to have x and y on the same side. We're going to add them together, and we're going to get some sort of constant c. Now, this is important right here. When possible, in standard form, we want to write the coefficients as x and y as constant as integers and the constant term. We want to write them all as integers. Okay. So if they are fractions make them into integers, all right? And of course, we know that a and b cannot both be zero. If x is zero, we have a horizontal line, or sorry, if a is zero, we have a horizontal line. If b is zero, we have a uh, vertical line. Okay? But they can't both be zero, or else we just, we have no, we have no function, we have no equation, all right? So let's try it. Here's my equation of a line. It happens to be in slope-intercept form. 3 fourths is the slope, minus 5 is the y-intercept.
Okay? So there's my equation in slope intercept form. Let's put it to standard form. So the first thing I want to do is make sure all the coefficients are integers. So we have y is equal to 3 fourths x minus 5. Okay? I want to take this and I want to multiply everything by 4. So that will clear the fraction. So this gives me 4y is equal to 3x minus 20. Now, I want x and y to be on the same side. That's what standard form is. So we can do minus 3x from both sides. Is equal to negative 20. And there's my equation in standard form. Now, some questions might want you to put the first, the x integer, you want to have the x integer positive. Uh, for this case, we don't have to quite go that far. But like in the next example, the x in integer is a positive integer. And if we wanted to switch x to be a positive integer, all we would have to do is multiply everything by negative 1. We don't have to do that in this case, though. Okay? So for this problem, however, right, we want to clear the fractions. So we're going to multiply everything by 6. That would give me 6y is equal to 11x minus 30. Okay? Subtract 11x from both sides. 6y is equal to negative 30. And now, as we look through the answers, we don't see that one, but we do see this right here, which if we multiply this entire equation by negative 1, we would get positive 11x minus 6y is equal to positive 30. Okay? Either one of those are acceptable for standard form. The answer choice here just happens to be C. Okay? Now, so we've talked about in the last two sections, we've talked about two different kinds of, or sorry, three different kinds of equations for writing lines. Okay? The first, slope-intercept form. Okay? This form is best used when you know the slope, when you know the y-intercept, and it's usually the easiest one to graph from. Okay? Point-slope form is used when you know the slope and the point, or when you know two points. Okay? This one, point-slope, is slightly easier to make an equation from two points than slope-intercept form was. Okay? And standard form. Right? This, is a, and a, this form is when we want A, B, and C to be all real numbers, and usually you're going to use this form with some sort of graphing utility. Okay? Now, you can graph stuff pretty easily using x and y intercepts if you have the equation in standard form. Okay? We can plug zeros in for x and y and then figure out the two intercepts from there and draw a line. Okay? So if I want to graph using intercepts, right, the first thing I would do is find the y-intercept. Well, the y-intercept is going to be some number where x is going to be 0. Okay. Then I'm going to find the x-intercept, right? Some number where x is going to be zero. Okay. So let's find the let's find the x-intercept first. Let's plug in zero for x. So my expression would look like this: 5y is equal to 15. Okay. That means that this would cancel, right? So we'd have 5y is equal to 15. Divide both sides by 5. And we'd have y is equal to 3. Okay? So there is my there is my y intercept. That is where x is 0 and y is equal to 3. Let's plot that. Okay? That goes right there. Okay? Now let's find my x intercept. Let's plug in 0 for y. So we have 3x plus 5 times 0 is equal to 15. Okay, that would cancel, so we'd have 3x is equal to 15, and divide both sides by 3, so x is equal to 5. Okay, let's plot that. Okay, well, first, here's my point, 5 comma 0. We'll plot that, and boom. Now I have two points that's more than enough to make a line. And there we go. Okay. So we can use what we know about standard form in order to uh, figure out the two intercepts and graph. Okay. 
let's move to a nice big word problem. All right, so we're going to take this real world situation here and we're going to figure out the we're going to figure out what's going on. Okay, so the question asks us about biology and it wants to know or it tells us the number of times a cricket chirps per minute depends on the temperature. Okay, the number of chirps in two seconds for two temperatures are shown at the bottom of the right. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a graph. But I want to know chirps per minute. If I'm going to graph something, I'm going to graph chirps per minute. So the first thing I'm going to do is figure out the number of chirps per minute. So at 40 degrees, okay, I know that there are zero chirps, okay, in two seconds. Well, right, if I'm talking about two seconds, how many, how many groups of two seconds are there in a minute, right? A minute has 60 seconds, so there's going to be 30. So I'm going to take 30 times the number of chirps, which is zero. So there's zero chirps per minute at 40 degrees. At 93 degrees, okay, we're going to take 30 and we're going to multiply it by eight chirps because there are eight chirps in two seconds. Okay, so I'm going to take that, multiply them together, and we're going to get 240. Okay, so I can plot this and make a good graph. All right, I'm not going to draw a graph. I'm going to let the textbook do it for me. So here's our nice little graph. Okay, and you can see that my two my two points are plotted on here. Uh, zero and zero. Okay, zero temperature, zero chirps. Oh, sorry, 40, 40 comma, right? Here's my first point, 40 comma zero. And my second point is 93 degrees comma 240 chirps. Okay, so those are my two data points plotted here and here. Okay, so next, what is the equation of this line in standard form? Well, the first thing I'm going to need is I'm going to need some sort of equation. Okay, I have two points. So because I have two points, the best way to, to figure out what the equation of this line is is going to be used is to use point slope form. So let's do it. So my slope is going to be 240 y2 minus y1 over 93 minus 40. Okay, that gives me 240 over 53, okay, which gives me a slope of about, let's round this off a little bit, okay, it's going to be about four and a half. Okay. So now I can use either point. Let's use the easier point though. Let's use the point that has zero in it, right? 40 comma zero. All right, that point's a little bit easier because of the zero. So let's plug it into my point slope form. So y minus zero is going to equal my slope times x minus 40. Okay. So now distributing and simplifying gives me y is equal to 4.5x. 4.5 times negative 40 gives me a minus... 180. Okay. Uh, this was an approximation, so I can kind of leave it there because it's kind of a decimal that never stops. So it's not really quite possible to put this into integer coefficients. If this was actually 4.5 and not a you know a big crazy decimal, then I would want to trans then I would want to multiply everything by two. Okay, but we can just leave it the way it is for now. All right. So my equation then would be negative 4.5x plus y is equal to negative 180. And I can make this a little simpler by multiplying everything by negative 1 to give me 4.5x minus y is equal to 180. Okay? So there's my equation in standard form. Right? We only didn't use integer coefficients because it wasn't really practical. So the last part of this is if the temperature is 70 degrees, how many chirps would, how many times would you, would a 
would a cricket be expected to chirp in one minute? So first of all, before we even start, make sure your answer is going to make sense, right? At 93 degrees, we had 240. So my answer should be a little bit less than that, okay? Or less than that, all right? So let's solve it. So we know my equation is gonna be, let's use slope intercept form, okay? Which was right here. So we have my equation right there, 4.5x minus 180. Okay, and all we have to do is plug in, uh, plug in 70 degrees. So 4.5 times 70 minus 180 gives me an answer of 135. Okay, which does make sense because it's less than uh, the number of chirps at 93 degrees. Okay, so that's a way to use all the stuff we you've, we've learned about uh, lines and linear equations in a sort of real-world biology problem. All right. So next, let's talk about two different types of lines and how we can compare them. Okay, parallel and perpendicular lines. Okay, the important thing to know here is that the slopes of parallel lines are equal to each other. If two lines are parallel, they have the same slope, but different, different y-intercepts. The red line intercepts well, the y-axis there, the blue line down there, okay? So that's what this says right here, is that the two slopes are equal, but the intercepts are not equal, okay? With perpendicular lines, the slopes of perpendicular lines are negative reciprocals of each other. That means that if you multiply the two slopes together, you would get negative one. For instance, if the slope of the first line is two, the slope of the second line would be negative one half. Okay? If the slope of the first line was three over four, the slope of the second line, right? We flip the fraction over and make it negative. Negative four over three. If the slope of the first line is negative one-fifth, the slope of the second line, flip it over and make it negative. So negative times a negative turns into a positive. So the slope of the second line would be a positive five. When you multiply the two slopes together, you have to get negative one. Okay? And that's what this says right here. Okay? And that m1 is equal to one over negative m2 and m2 is equal to negative 1 over m1, right? m1 and m2 are negative reciprocals of each other. Right? So with this information, you could figure out the equation of a line parallel to something through a different point or perpendicular to something through a different point. So let's take a look. If I want to figure out the equation of a line in slope-intercept form, so we might have to change it to slope-intercept form, okay? I'm going to want to figure out the equation of a line. I know I know the slope because the slopes of parallel lines have to be the same. And I know a point. So I'm going to start with point slope form and turn it into into slope intercept form. So with slope with point slope form, I would take y plus three, y minus negative three is equal to my slope times x minus one. Now, this is an equation with a slope of 6, so that means it is going to be parallel to that first equation, and it's going to go through a different point. Now I just have to simplify it. y plus 3 is equal to 6x minus 6. Subtract 3 from both sides, so y is equal to 6x minus 9. And there is my formula in slope-intercept form. If I want to try one that's perpendicular, Okay. Now my slope, instead of being one, instead of being four, the slope of a line perpendicular is going to be positive one over four, the negative reciprocal of negative four. So that would give me now with my new, with my new equation going through that point, y minus five is equal to positive one quarter, the negative reciprocal, x minus eight. Simplifying this, distribute the one quarter, 
1 quarter x minus a quarter times 8 is going to be minus 2. And then add 5 to both sides. So y is going to be equal to 1 fourth x plus 3. And there's my equation in slope intercept form. Okay. Let's look at, at one more one more of each of those real quick. So through this point, parallel to this. And now I just got to figure all these equations are in slope intercept form. So I'm going to use the same thing. So through negative four or five, parallel to y is equal to negative two x plus one, my slope I know is going to be the same and we're going to use point slope form. So y minus a negative five, so that'd be y plus five is going to be equal to two times x plus four. Okay, simplify or distribute this plus eight and subtract five from both sides. So we have y is equal to two x plus three. And I can see then my answer would be d. Okay. One more, perpendicular. Okay. So through this point, perpendicular to this line. Now the slope there is negative one. The negative reciprocal of that, right, if my slope is negative 1, which is what negative x means, my slope 2 would be the negative reciprocal of negative 1. So I'd flip 1 over, and I would still have 1, and I would make it positive. Okay? And when I multiply those two slopes together, they do indeed give me negative 1. So that's my slope is going to be a positive 1. So we would have y plus 1 is equal to, I don't have to draw the 1, right? X plus four, and then I would just subtract one from both sides. To give me Y is equal to X plus three, which would be A. Okay. So that is two dash four, more about linear equations.